And Jacob was the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. In his 1981 encyclical, Familiaris Consortio, number 42, St. John Paul II wrote, Since the Creator of all things has established the conjugal partnership as the beginning and basis of human society, the family is the first and vital cell of the society. This great Pope and saint continued, The family has vital and organic links with society since it is its foundation and nourishes it continually through its roles of service to life. It is from the family that citizens come to birth, and it is within the family that they find the first school of social virtues that are the animating principle of the existence and development of society itself. Our society today is in a major spiritual and moral crisis. Across the globe, societies have come to openly embrace the culture of death. And we see it in the spread of divorce, euthanasia, abortion, total birth control, same-sex marriage, just to name a few. This culture of death, also known as the error of Russia, is totally anti-society. The society is in crisis because the family, its unit cell, is also in crisis. There are three inseparable elements of the family. The father, who is the head of the family, the mother, who is the heart of the family, and the child or children, who are the members and the fruit of love of the parents. Definitely, when the family is in crisis, it is because fatherhood is also in crisis. For this reason, let us turn to St. Joseph, who is the patron of families and the patron of fathers. Let's look into the role of St. Joseph as a father. Our Holy Mother, the Church, gives St. Joseph a theological category that places him at the apex of all the saints, and this is called protodulia. This title means that St. Joseph is the first to be venerated among all the saints. According to the saints, especially St. Bernardine of Siena, this title is given because of the dignity given to his sublime office as the father of the Holy Family. For according to the vocation that God gives to any individual, God gives corresponding graces commensurate with that vocation. There are two roles given to St. Joseph by God. First, as the foster father of Jesus, the Son of God. Second, as the spouse of Mary, the mother of God. To consider St. Joseph as the earthly father of Jesus is the most outstanding, if not completely mind-boggling, work of the Eternal Father. It speaks not only of the magnanimity of God, but also His infinite love for us. To send His only Son, Jesus, the second person of the Blessed Trinity, and to allow his son to become a little baby, vulnerable, weak, and totally dependent upon a human mother and a human father. Mary and St. Joseph truly goes beyond any human comprehension. Indeed, St. Joseph was and will always be the earthly father of Jesus. This was the will of God the Father for all eternity. And of course, St. Joseph was the best of all earthly fathers. He was given the most sublime qualities a man could ever have, so that these would be characteristics for fathers to imitate. We all desperately need good role models to imitate, and now, more than ever, fathers need a role model, and St. Joseph is, by far, the best there is. This being said, St. Joseph is the best example of a man of prayer. To be a good father, one must first and foremost be a noble, loving, and obedient son to the Heavenly Father. And St. Joseph was one such good son. How many fathers today pray and pray with quality time to God? Encourage or even lead his family, his children, to do the same? 
This is what is lacking in many families. Children learn better by observation and by example. To see their mother praying is normal, but to see the father praying and leading it in the family, children would take notice and imitate. All fathers must pray with utmost sincerity the prayer of the Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. A true father must have God as his guide, source, life, and inspiration. All fathers would do well to imitate St. Joseph, to have that deep relationship with the Heavenly Father, to learn the true meaning of the Lord's Prayer. The second role of St. Joseph was to be the spouse of Mary, the mother of God. St. Joseph was a faithful and loving spouse. The liturgy teaches us how St. Joseph cherished dearly the Blessed Virgin Mary. To cherish means to really love the person. It is true that both St. Joseph and the Blessed Mother enter the virginal marriage and live a chaste relationship under the inspiration and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Nonetheless, on the human level, there existed a most profound and dynamic love that bound them together, a love imbued with the presence of the Holy Spirit. For fathers to be true and genuine husbands, they must love God with all their heart mind and soul first. Only by doing so can they really love their wives in return. For when they have this kind of love, will they be able to express and transmit true affection to their own children. It would be like rain falling and moistening the parched ground. A gesture of kindness and love given to the wife is a gesture and kindness and love given to the children. St. Joseph was also a teacher. On the human level, he taught Jesus how to speak and say, Abba, Daddy. How to walk. How to become a craftsman, a carpenter. How to pray the words in the Psalms, such as, The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Psalm 23, 1. How to understand the Logos, the eternal word of God the Father. How to pray using human words. The documents of Vatican II and the Catechism of the Catholic Church insist that the parents, both father and mother, are the primary teachers of their children, most especially in matters of the faith. Fathers have in St. Joseph the best model and example of a teacher for their children in all areas, academic, social, human, emotional, but especially in morality and spirituality. And all that repairs to the good of the soul of the child and his eternal salvation. Saint Joseph was always, and I emphasize always, available to the needs of his wife and son. Mary and Jesus, he prayed with the family, worked with the family, ate with the family, went to the synagogue and temple with the family, laughed with the family, recreated with the family, and finally died in the arms of those he loved most, his family, Jesus and Mary. It is unfortunate that with the fast-paced lifestyle we have and the never-ending demands for a better comfortable lifestyle, many have become absentee husbands and fathers. Because many fathers are mostly absent on important family occasions, a gap is weds between husband and wife, and between father and children. And this becomes a vicious cycle passed on from one generation to the next. Some of the reasons why fathers are at times absent from important family gatherings or from their children's special locations are the following. He and his wife are divorced or living separated with their own respective families, working too many hours or have too many jobs, Engaged in vices, drinking, gambling, partying, loves his sports, and cannot disengage himself, such as basketball, football, golf, baseball tournaments, hooked on drugs, alcohol, and pornography. Saint Joseph willing sacrifice and suffered for Jesus and Mary. 
He suffered doubts because he did not know the virginal conception of Jesus until the angel explained it to him. Only then did St. Joseph took Mary to be his spouse. St. Joseph made a long and grueling trip from Nazareth to Bethlehem in total obedience to the governing authorities, accompanying his pregnant wife on a donkey, only to be rejected in every inn they strive to stay in. Then he had to take his wife and newborn son into the bitter cold and darkness of the night to flee the murderous attempts of King Herod, staying in exile in Egypt for years to protect his son from being killed. True fathers must be willing to work hard for their children, sacrifice for their children, and even be willing to suffer for their children, to bring them to safety from the many wiles of the modern heroes. Our human nature shirks and recoils from the prospect of suffering. However, it is part and parcel of human existence. Saint Joseph sacrificed himself and suffered intensely for one reason, love. This great saint loved God, he loved his wife Mary, and he had an all-encompassing love for his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In that memorable visit of Pope Francis in the Philippines in January 2015, many came to see the Vicar of Christ with hearts still shattered and grieving from the massive destruction which claimed tens of thousands of lives in a country smarting from severe poverty. The Pope was brought to the stricken areas where nature claimed both lives and properties and where humanity was left on its knees. He spoke very little, but took in every detail of the misery that was all around him. Then in one of his homilies, he spoke and left the people the only vestige of hope he could at that moment, St. Joseph. As a young priest, he said, he was in charge of a parish and as a bishop of a diocese who suffered financially, materially, morally, spiritually, and diabolically. At the time of the day, what he would do was to get a slip of paper and write all his problems, his requests, petitions, and everything that he could not solve or have no solutions for. This slip of paper he then would place under the image of the sleeping Saint Joseph, which he kept on his table. He said he would pray that as Saint Joseph slept, he would dream of solutions to Bergoglio's many problems. Pope Francis claimed that he received so many blessings and graces as well as many miracles by this childlike devotion to Saint Joseph. When he became the Supreme Pontiff, Pope Francis told the crowd that he brought his sleeping Saint Joseph and gave it a permanent place on his office table. When the challenges would seem to be overwhelming, those slips of paper would remain tucked under the sleeping Saint Joseph. The Pope then told the silent crowd before him that there was no problems and are beyond the help of the great protector of the Holy Family, the Holy Mother of the Church. He told everyone, to have special and sweet devotion to Saint Joseph, the foster father of Jesus, the spouse of Mary, and the terror of the devil. Saint Joseph received overwhelming graces in his sleep. He dreamt dreams that provided solutions to many of his trials and challenges. Why? In Acts chapter 2, verse 16 to 18, we read of God telling the prophet Joel, it shall be in the last days that I will pour forth my spirit on all mankind. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. God talks to Saint Joseph during his dreams by sending angels to communicate with him. And from them, he receives the power of God's divine mandate. Before the incarnation, when Saint Joseph was about to leave the Virgin Mary, whom he found pregnant, 
after being betrothed to her, he wanted to leave her privately so as not to expose the scandal. While sleeping, God told Saint Joseph to the angel Gabriel to take Mary for his wife because the child is to be the savior of the world and will free men from their sins, that it was but a part of the Holy Spirit that the Virgin Mary conceived. Again, after the visit of the Magi, the power of God was manifested to him through the angel. While Saint Joseph slept, he was told to take the child and his mother Mary right away and escape to Egypt because Herod decreed to kill all babies two years and under in Bethlehem and in the nearby district. Saint Joseph did not only evade the murderers, he was even empowered by God to protect the child Jesus from Satan and from any disaster. From this mandate, Saint Joseph received the power to become the terror of the devil. After the death of Herod, of which Saint Joseph did not know, the Lord again told him in a sleep to return to Israel. And again, while already in Israel, he was told in a dream to go into Nazareth instead of Jerusalem because Archelaus, son of King Herod, was still looking for the newborn king of Israel. I have two suggestions how you can invite Saint Joseph to have a prominent presence and role in the sanctification of your family. First, purchase an attractive statue or painting of Saint Joseph, even the sleeping Saint Joseph, and place it in a prominent place in your house. Second, on a daily basis, have the family pray together. A prayer to Saint Joseph. It might even be the litany of Saint Joseph. Better yet, a novena to the saint right after your rosary. Do not be surprised to experience real changes improving your family life in a short time if this is done religiously. The great Saint Teresa of Avila, the great woman doctor of the church who loved and promoted devotion to glorious Saint Joseph said that sometimes saints delay in their intercession. But not so with Saint Joseph. He worked quick. She said, he is the saint to beg graces from in all circumstances and situations. We are told in Mark chapter 10, verse 9, that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. In God's divine plan, these three hearts of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph are to be intimately united. Every time we adore the sacred heart of Jesus in all the tabernacles throughout the world, let us also bless and venerate the holy hearts of his mother, Mary, and his foster father, Saint Joseph. Since these three hearts love us so tenderly, let us often say, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, have mercy on us. Immaculate heart of Mary, heart like the heart of Jesus. Pray for us. Heart of Joseph, always faithful to Jesus and Mary, intercede for us. During the day when we are so taken up by work, pause for a while and say to the three hearts, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I love you, save souls. And when the time comes for us to return to our eternal home in heaven, may we never forget to utter the prayers of the three hearts. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, I give you my heart and my soul. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, assist me in my last agony. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, may I breathe forth my soul in peace with you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh, dear Saint Joseph, patron of families and fathers, when society's families today are spiritually and morally broken, we implore you to come to our aid, to mend the divisions in our family. You are the terror of the devil. Please cast out the demons of division that is dividing our family, our society, the church. Saint Teresa of Babila said that petitions to you are never delayed because you are so prompt in your response. Since you are inseparable, to Jesus and the Messiah, your adopted son, and Mary, the majestic of all graces, 
your virginal spouse, whatever your requests from them are immediately answered. Come to our rescue, O loving Saint Joseph. Make haste to help us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.